everybody. Welcome to What Women Binge. We are so excited to welcome our dear friend Annie Potts here. Hi. Annie, thank you for being here. So She's an icon. <laughs> so much to talk about. Um, oh my gosh. Let's start with Young Sheldon because that is what you're like. I know that you're heartbroken. It's ending, but is it is it like bittersweet? I'm sure it's like bittersweet. Like It, it, it is. It is. I mean, you know. We're a family. We all love each other and uh, are used to spending our days with each other. So it'll be a big shift. And it seems like they're they've canceled us at the height of our our uh, what we have to offer. So I yeah I don't, I don't understand it. Is there is there something about the prophecy of like? what has to happen in Big Bang Theory, like coming back and having to play out? Like, is that difficult? Like, Well, I, th- I think that that does have something to do with it um, because, uh, you know, the father has to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Um, I've been saying that for a long time and everybody gets all like, wait, what? And I'm like, well, if you know Big Bang Theory, there's a story there already. Wow. Do people really care about being strictly hewed to some? I mean, it's like, you know, they can, I don't know. Hey, they, know it's, it's, for whatever reasons that are not understood or shared with, <clears throat> they wanted to end the show. Um, yeah. I suspect it has more to do with money than uh, story. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I have noticed the industry has changed, especially after the strike that like everyone's saying they need content, but nobody's willing to pay for it. Right. So we, yes, we're in it when it, we're, it, we're in a change up time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fun. For sure. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing new stuff as much as I have enjoyed that. I'm, I'll be really, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to do yeah. something new, but I know like, if someone series, will like, hire me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think you're going to have a problem, Annie. <laughs> Just go on your IMDB. And it's like, I was looking at it today to be like, what have I missed? Like, what have I forgotten that you've been a part of that? Like, you know, and it is just so extensive. You have been on everything that ever exists, like every show, every wonderful movie. You work with every big director. I mean, it's incredible. Well, I have been doing it almost 50 years. <laughs> wow. I don't know how that happened. But, but you're only 26. Yeah. So how is that possible? Right. Like, how? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> but you still look it. Well, I'm sure as Mima, like, of all the characters you've played, like, I mean, I always say this is like picking your favorite child, but like, like what would be your favorite character of all? Like, I mean, let's, we're talking Ghostbusters, Designing Women, Pretty and Pink, like all these things. Like, what would be your? Well, I did a show uh, on Lifetime called Any Day Now, and uh, oh. it, it was about race. And of course, I'm Southern, you know, and those issues have always been my um, at the heart of who I am, what I understood as a child, what I saw, Jim Crow, hmm. all of that, separate bathrooms. I saw that as a child. And so those, all that stuff was important to me, yeah. subject matter wise. And I had a wonderful acting partner in Lorraine Toussaint and the writing staff hmm. was just beyond fabulous. And uh, it was a it was a very democratic set, you know. We were just all on the same page, mm. and it was so thrilling to do that material. And I think, I mean, even now, I don't think anybody has written about race as well as as they. So that was totally my heart project. Mm. So you could jump back into that character you would for at least a little while. I uh, yeah. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. That'd be fun. Maybe well, it's I, Yeah, yeah. So I have to tell you, this whole thing came from you. Like What Women Binge was kind of, you were sort of the catalyst for me wanting to do this podcast because- What? When I was direct, yeah. So when I was doing Young Sheldon and we went into the COVID era and I was directing a, a few of the episodes and I was on set with you. And I remember Jason Alexander, I think there was one conversation the three of us had, but you and I would always have these conversations, but like you would always feed me with what we sh- I should be watching. And I, I'll never forget you <laughs> suggesting the great. And I was like, it would became my favorite show. Oh my God. Was- 
why did that show why did that show go largely unnoticed how on earth did uh l fanning not sweep every award i mean yeah. it, it, it's astonishing it's phenomenal yeah and nicholas holt oh, is like my. my favorite part of it he's just oh. brilliant and so dreamy you suggested even that though show. you want to hate him <laughs> yeah i know yeah. i i yeah I, I i that is a mystery to me how that is not you know but you suggested that jason has suggested another show ian suggested uh i watch only murders in the building like everyone is talking about like, what should we, you know, especially during COVID, like, what should we watch? What should we watch? My girlfriends in Connecticut started a spreadsheet of like, somebody give me a good book. Somebody give me a good podcast. And I was like, you know what? I should start an Instagram page. So I started an Instagram page of like reviews of things you should watch or, you know, if you're lost and don't know what to watch oh. next. And then that became the podcast. And that was kind of all from, that's all from you, like giving me great suggestions and being like, I want to share these with the world. <laughs> well, I do think, I do think that it, it, it it's sort of the a new golden era of of TV because honestly, the big movies and I have one coming out and I, the the fifth Ghostbuster. I've been doing the same movies for forty years. I've only done <laughs> if you look, it's like I've done two movies. I've done Toy Stories. I've done <laughs> three of those, and I've done five Ghostbusters. It's my whole yeah. career. Anyway. There you go. The, those are uh, Ghostbusters is made for like fourteen year old boys, basically. <clears throat> Although it's a little twist, young girls. I mean, it's this movie is going to be, I think, for girls, what um, uh, what Taylor Swift is, you know, mm -hmm. in uh, musically. Um, and we have the wonderful McKenna Grace. I know she's going to be on our podcast soon. I think she's amazing. So um, oh, good. She is so lovely. And man, that child can act. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's crazy. And so you've got the Ghostbusters. She and I have the Sabrina. She played little Sabrina. Oh my so God. So we have like a Sabrina. I mean, not in, not with me on the remake on Netflix. So we never even worked together wow. until I directed her on Young Sheldon. And I got to meet another Sabrina. It was the first time I ever met someone that was like the same character as me. So it was cool. She, I was coming back on the airplanes from somewhere the other day. And I, I, I love Allison Janney so much. And her performance in I, Tanya. Oh. Was so great. It it offered that on the on my selection of things to watch on the plane, and so I started to watch it. And there was McKenna Grace no as way. little Margo. She plays tiny Tanya, and oh. um, she's like seven or something. And little bitty, little bitty, and of course, absolutely fabulous in in. Dif difficult um, emotional stuff for a little girl, uh, and man, she was just sensational. Yeah, she um, kills it every I time. I love her. To, I love her to pieces. You know, I have a similar story. It's funny. We on Young Sheldon, she had to have like an almost kiss with Sheldon. She's like pretending to kiss him, and then she like draws a mustache on him. And so we had to have this. So I was like really delicate with this, like okay, let's clear the set. Let's, let me talk to her. Let me talk to him. Let me get them together. You know, it's going to be awkward. You're going to look at him. He's going to close his eyes. You know, so I was trying to like be really delicate with what might be their first almost kiss, like not kiss, but like an awkward situation. Yeah. That night I go home and turn on Handmaid's Tale. And there she is as one of the wives, one of the commander's wives. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like <laughs> she's is not a big deal for her. <laughs> I mean, no. it might have still been. I'm glad I handled it. The, I'm glad I didn't know that beforehand that I could still handle it like with kid gloves. But I watched that and I went, oh, she probably didn't need all that, like me dancing around it and trying to be delicate. Yeah. But but I'm glad I did. But so that's fine. She does. She handles some, I mean, in Handmaid's Tale, she blew me away. And like, I mean, she's just, her, she's already had an insane career. But anyway, we're not here to talk about her. We'll talk to her next week. I want to talk to you. <laughs> um, okay. So tell us about, what can you tell us about Ghostbusters? It comes out this week. Well, when we... Mm -hmm. Record this. It's the, it comes out the twenty second of March. Yeah, we're going to air this. On the that is in relationship to where we are now. Yeah, we're going to air this I, the month, well, Wednesday before. I, I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm seeing it for the first time next week. But I, uh, I, I have a nice, I, I have a nice role, and I think it's very good um, uh, for women too. Uh, I mean. McKenna Grace, of course, is the is kind of the new lead of it, and she represents, oh, you know, 
women, she's playing, I guess, 14 or something like that. So the, the young girls are going to get it. And then we have the wonderful Carrie Coons, who's also out there, you know, like action figure uh, doing the ghost busting. And then there's, you know, uh, me uh-huh. <laughs> representing uh-huh. representing the mature women. Um, but I, I get my flight suit and uh, um, I'm ghost busting with the boys this time. You are? At, yes. at, at 71, yeah. That's oh, amazing. It's so fun. 40 years, I finally got my flight suit. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, yeah, yeah, I had to be, you know, like uh, uh, special special effects and action hero. Run. I mean, you know, we're all in our 70s now. It's hilarious. The boys could <laughs> barely stand up with the packs on their backs and then would have to run. And uh, I, who broken every bone in my body, was like, wait, what? The the car is going to try to kill us and we have to run? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so, but anyway, I have a, I have a, I have a, a nice little, uh, I have a nice little payoff after 40 and, years yeah. of doing it. And wait, so that's what I was going to make like, are the flight packs like super, super heavy and can they make lighter ones? Well, I mean, these are the the proton packs that yeah. you know the lasers come out of, or something. I didn't have to carry that. Oh. They, I have a new, I have a new weapon. It just fits on my arm. Um, but um, we have some new tools in busting ghosts. I love it. I love it. I so It'll be fun. Oh my gosh! I, I know wait. Brain, who's watching this right now, producing this show for us. He's probably about to crawl through the screen. He's so excited. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh well, boys you know, of all it, ages, girls it, of all ages. It'll be so fun. Yes, it just it. Um, yeah, it it it's lovely. I think you know it's. They had to have the new gen to pass it on to. I think you know they like to make it a franchise like the Marvel movies. Oh, yeah. um, because people just never tire of busting ghosts. No, I mean, ghosts are always me something feel good. people are afraid of. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, can you tell us from, let's go back to young Sheldon for a moment. What is like, what will you take away as sort of like your favorite episode, your favorite memory? Mm. What was your, like, I mean, Mima's such a fun character and you've just played. He is it. so fun. Uh, I, 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 the first episode I appeared in, which was the third episode when the series began, yeah, because it was just like a, a moment that kind of set the character forever that they had, George has had a heart attack. They have to take him to the hospital. They ask her, Mima, to come over and babysit the kids. And she, you can tell like she didn't really want to do it. And so she shows up and she's rooting around in the refrigerator for something to drink. Because if you've got a babysit, you know, you need some drinks. And uh, (laughs) anyway, she looks in the refrigerator and she says, she finds something. She goes, what kind of Texan drinks pink one? Anyway, of course, then she (laughs) proceeds to drink an entire bottle of pink one. And um, that always just tickled me. Yeah. And uh, um, it, it kind of set her up for the whole, you know, seven years there. That's such a good one. That's a really great one. Um, and, and in this season, you've so your house has been taken down by a tornado, right? Mm-hmm. And, but you've got your gambling, your uh, casino. What? Not a casino. Well, uh, yeah, it's an illegal casino. Illegal, illegal casino in the laundromat, right? That's a right. That's a apparently. Fun Apparently this happens. Wait, what? For real? <laughs> Apparently they have these little gambling rooms that are not quite legal in Texas. But then you know it. it's Texas. <laughs> there's I a think- lot of there's a lot of shit going on in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. That is true. That is a good way to put it. Um and then I just, just like, I mean, one of like an all time classic that you're in is, I mean, outside of the, like you said, you've, you know, with your, with Toy Story, of course, with playing uh, Bo Peep, right? And that's, I can't even imagine like, do you get to go on to Disney back to the new Toy Story? 
Did I get to go to Disney for a week? Do you get to go for free? <laughs> well, of course you do. You're a celebrity. You know, I, I, my children are sort of over the, the, the going to Disneyland phase, but, but I do have a little though, right? friend. I, I have a couple, but uh, they're, they're still tiny and uh, they're one and a half and two and a half, but pretty soon. Uh, I hadn't thought to ask for a free pass. Well, but, you need to take uh, advantage of that. You're Bo Peep. Like, you get to do that. <laughs> I think, I think I, I'm think i a walk around. They call them walk around characters. When you, when you have a, a, you know, just like Pinocchio and Mickey and Minnie and Pluto and all the Disney characters, they, you know, they put the big heads on and they walk around Disneyland. <laughs> um and uh, so I think once you're a walk around character, you you do get some privileges yeah, and perks, perks, maybe. Yeah. Um. So when they're a little older, I can't I can't wait to take them. Oh, are you? My, how, I mean, we, how weird to have your grandmother be a walk around character. No, how awesome! How weird to have your grandmother's voice, and I have a, as you know, a particular voice <laughs> that. Of, I'm sure. Hey, look, it's been weird for my kids, and it'll be weird for my grandkids. Yeah, but it's fabulous, story. also. Yeah. Are you going to uh, be in the new Toy Story? You know, I don't. I don't know. We got to campaign I, for that. I, I think. Yeah. You know, it takes years to do them. They, they, it takes years to hatch the idea. I mean, it's like five years from. Mm -hmm. So, I don't. I, I don't know. Um, but what I an amazing thing! I mean. The joy those movies bring to families like mine, like, I mean, and, and and the kids that grew up with it, the ones that were little when Andy was little and then grow up with Andy and are Andy's age and like, you know, like my nephew, I know always felt very like it's, it's like part of their childhood. So it just, oh, it gives me chills. Just like, yeah. how well, important then they, are. you know, they follow the whole thing. I mean, when Andy goes away to school, oh, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a tough one. Hey, Amanda, you know how we always give our guests really great socks? Yes. Well, I just found some new socks and I think you did too. Dr. I, Motion. I love Dr. Motion socks. Dr. Motion socks are awesome. Here's the crazy thing about Dr. Motion. It's a wellness brand. It's a wellness brand, but for your feet. And well, and goodness. it benefits all parts of your body, really. They have mild compression socks, which are ankle length to knee high. They're smooth. They're reinforced toe for optimal comfort and durability, which is great. Uh, I wore them on a hike this week. And let me tell you, girls' feet held up. Yes. And good. the compression tights are awesome for being on the airplane. They help me with circulation. And, you know, they just, they just hurt that they're cute, too. When you think of compression socks, you don't always think cute. But I got compliments on mine. And yours have tiny mushrooms. Mine have tiny mushrooms because we're in a mushroom phase right now. And <laughs> mushrooms are hot and I like my mushroom socks. And the graduated compression tights have full leg support to reduce leg fatigue. Yes. And for our diabetic customers, they have the most comfortable diabetic socks. They are non-compression and they've been designed specifically to keep the needs of diabetics in mind. So there's no binding lycra and the graduated cuff allows maximum stretch. And look, no matter your age or gender, whether you're a nurse, a mother, a teacher, a traveler, an athlete, someone who stands all day, someone who sits all day, they're great for everybody. And the spring summer collection just launched on the website. So go check it out. Have fashionable, comfortable, healthy feet. All you got to do is go to drmotionsocks.com and check out the products and explore the whole new collection. And it's Dr. D-R Motion Socks. D-R-M-O-T-I-O-N-S-O-C-K-S dot com. Check it out. Explore the new collection. Have any of your boys left for college yet? Well, my first one is about to. He's about to. He just turned 18. I have an adult child. I literally today said to someone like, oh, I have oh. an adult child. I just had an adult child. No, wait, I didn't just have, like, I don't even know how to explain it. He, is an adult <laughs> right. Right. he just became an adult. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just okay. getting there. All that empty nest stuff is starting to, my husband and I actually were talking about it today. We're like, what are we going to, he's, he's visiting me right now in West Virginia while I'm filming a movie. So he just came in for like the weekend to hang out with me. And I'm like, oh, I, you know, we're talking about things like what happens when the kids are like, we're just starting to have those conversations and it's, ah, I don't know. It's scary, but how, how old is your littlest? He's 11. So it's still, okay, so still you got seven years. Yep. You got seven years. Yeah. It's, you know, I have, 
as you know, I have three sons as well. I know we're three boy moms. We're both three boy oh. moms. I I hear there's a special place in heaven for us. I hope so. I, I think um, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, it's when the first one leaves home, that's that's really hard. Yeah. That's and you have really the hard. Are near you. Are, are they all do they all live near you? Who, uh, they live all over the place. My, my oldest son is here and he has a baby of his own now. And, um, I met that then, baby. Uh, you invited me over one day and I got to meet the baby. Uh, then my, my middle son lives in new Orleans and my oldest son lives in New York. So I've got him on every coast, Yeah, but, um, uh, my middle son is, he, is staying with us right now. He's working on Young Sheldon. Oh wow! So yeah, there's because after the strike, no work in New Orleans, so mm -hmm. he had to come here for a little bit. But when that first one leaves, man, I it's like ooh, when one of the boys I took the boys one, the second one I think to college, and they had a little thing for the parents before the parents are supposed to leave, and the the college president said when my when my son went off to college he said I felt like I'd lost the best job I'd ever had and I thought that was isn't that sweet it's that's like because so that's the feeling it's like and what did I do wrong why did I lose that job it's like because you did your job well yeah. and you you completed it yeah and it's very uh, I think I feel the same way about Sheldon. It's like, why am I not going to have this job anymore? Yeah, because yeah. Um, it, it's a wonderful product. And uh, so it's hard to let it go, even if you're sending it off into the, into the atmosphere yeah, of, yeah. Of, of the greater world. But it's um, tough. That's interesting. Feel yourself. I yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I had a lot of TV shows that ended, but we didn't know for sure that they were ending. And it was only my third show, Melissa and Joey, that we knew for sure we weren't coming back on. And I have to say, like, I always, the last few episodes were so hard to get through just grieving. I'm never going to get to play. Like, I didn't really miss my other characters as much as I missed that. And I was like, I never get to play her again. I never get to embody that again. I never get to be her again. And like, I mean, I can in like my living room if I want to, but nobody's watching, nobody's laughing. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm like, yeah. it, it, it does. It's like a little piece of you like goes away. And I guess, I, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's what it's going to feel like. I have, I literally today spent this morning planning his graduation party and I'm like, Oh I, gosh. I, don't know. I haven't, I've accepted Where's it. He gonna, haven't. Where, where does he want to go to school? He doesn't. Close? He doesn't. He he doesn't want to go to school. This new generation, to to these kids don't want to go to yeah. college now. It's very strange. And like, he wants to be a pilot. So, um, oh. yeah. So that's a great career great path. already. Uh, yeah, he is a pilot. He is a pilot. And, but he has not kind of moved as fast as he could have. He sort of stalled out in the last year, had the senioritis and stalled out, like for lack of a better, mm -hmm. stalled out with his pilot training. Um, because I think now he's like, okay, I got time. But I'm like, no, let's do something. Like, so um, it's a little failure, failure to yeah, launch. How, how does that work? Do you just go to pilot college? So there are colleges that have, there's like Embry-Riddle is a great college for like aeronautics in Florida or Arizona. Um, there's schools like Auburn, um, Purdue. Some of them have like, I think like Louisiana Tech has one, Bowling Green. MTSU like some, here in Tennessee. Yeah, MTSU is a great one in middle Tennessee. And, um, and so it's, it, you know, so there's, there's options for college, but there's also like two year flight training, but you have to get 1500 hours to become a commercial pilot. So it's like a lot of work. So we'll see. We'll see. But he has an hey, have you been watching? Have you been watching Masters of the Air? No, I can't wait. I'm, it's on my list. No, what is this? Oh my God. You have to watch this with him. It, it's so thrilling. My father was a pilot in World War II. Um, he actually was a, f a flight instructor, so he never saw active duty. But I'm telling you, you watch this, and well, first of all, it you the aerial footage that they get, you go, oh my god, how did they do this? How did the actors 
you know, be in like a fake airplane and they're being shot at and the wings on fire and they don't have wheels. for a TV show too, right? It's it's Apple. Oh it's my god! Show, I think. Yeah, but it's I'm writing it's, this down. I haven't I, even heard of this. Oh my! Well, Spielberg and and Tom Hanks produced it. Oh, so then it's gonna be gorgeous. It's big. It, it's like every it's, episode's gonna be like a movie, and, right? I it's so intense. It's awesome. I, I Austin Butler is the star. I can't sit there. Yes, I can't sit in a chair and Love watch him. it. I have to stand up. Really? You can't believe these kids and your son who wants to be a pilot. You should watch it because, uh, like the there's like eleven, I don't know, nine, eleven boys on a plane, and the oldest, who's the captain, is maybe twenty four. Mm. They were kids. Yeah, kids. Up fifteen, twenty thousand feet, being shot at and having a hundred, you know, fighter planes. Come. I mean, it, oh it's just that's wild. Your son won't hopefully have to face any of those kind of yeah. things. But I think he'll really, he'll really, uh, you'll all really. Yeah, no, I really want to watch it with him. I wonder if he'll, you know, he's eighteen. I don't know if he's going to watch anything with me right now, but I'll try. I'm trying to get him to watch Pulp well, Fiction. Even if he, now, Pulp Fiction. he what, Amanda? Even if he ends up watching it on his own, it could be really. Yeah. Yeah. Or we both watch it and then talk about it later. I'd be okay oh. with that. <laughs> oh, oh no. This is definitely something that you can watch together. Okay. All right. I'm going to, when I get home from this movie, I'm going to see if I can maybe I'll pull on the heartstrings a little, like, come on, do something with mommy before you move out. Like, <laughs> oh, if he watches, if he watches 15 minutes of it, 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 you'll be hooked. Okay. I'll tell him, I'll tell him Bo Peep said he has to watch it and then he'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, so um, wait, I want to talk about Pretty in Pink real quick. Can we talk about that? Do you mind? Sure. I mean, such a classic, such an amazing movie. Like, what are some of your memories from that that you can share with us? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, I it, it certainly has endured. And I think one of the reasons that it has is that um, it, it, John Hughes was so great at at understanding how teenagers feel, mm -hmm. and uh, I I'm sorry that they I, I don't know anything offhand anyway that is speaking to teenagers as he could uh, embody them. I mean, he's a grown man. It's like how how do you as a grown man know what what teenagers are feeling? But he was just genius at it, and. Uh, it, it's so sweet. And Molly Ringwald was such a lovely um, touchstone for all girls then, um, and uh, it, it it was just lovely to do. Um, and uh, I I mean I was I I was thirty two I think when I did that. And I was like, you know, I was the old woman then. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt I felt old at 32. Boy, I was stupid about that. Well, because you're surrounded um, by 22-year-olds, right? So it makes, I right. mean. They were, they were, they were I, I think Molly was like 19. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I did Dancing with the Stars and I was 32 and they made me all, even though there were celebrities on there that were a lot older than me and went up, but. That's I remember that time make people making me feel old for the first time where I was like, oh, okay. Like I was always the baby on set, and there's that one day when it shifts and you're like, oh. Okay. Yeah, well, I it's still shocking to me. It's like, wait, I'm the grandmother? Yeah. I'm the old woman? What? <laughs> yeah. The movie I'm on right now, I'm the, I think I'm the oldest one on the whole crew. I'm like, this is weird. So I normally find bras to be really uncomfortable and constricting, but I have to tell you that Skims has changed everything. I have been wearing Skims now for a year and recently just tried their bras and I am madly in love. I will never go back. I preach the gospel of the Skims bra to legitimately every friend we talk to. Yeah, even With the underwire bras I'm wearing all day, I barely notice I'm wearing them. I don't want to take them off, like rip them off me when I first get home. No, and historically that has been me. Like I come home, I take off my hard clothes, AKA the underwire bras and the jeans, and I get into my soft stuff. But with Skims, I don't feel like I have to do that anymore. No, and Skims is also creating the next generation of underwear and bras for every body. And it literally fits every body. 
Yeah, right I'm now, telling you. I'm actually wearing mine right now. I'm wearing my Fitz Everybody push-up bra in Onyx. Me too. I'm wearing my Fitz Everybody t-shirt. Which yeah, I love ooh. the I love the push-up too, but the t-shirt bra is like it goes with everything. Y'all, I'm I'm in pajamas right now and I have on a bra. Why? Because it makes me feel good. But then and when it, you take the clothes off, like date nights just got better because it's so comfortable. <laughs> you don't even notice you're wearing them. And then like, you you know, all of a sudden you're in your sexy little, you know, skimpies. And yeah, happy Valentine's Day to us. Right? <laughs> These bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest materials, so you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Yes, Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and style, and their bras are available now in 62 sizes from 30A to 46H. It's incredible. Believe the hype. I'm telling you, we love these things. We would not tell you about them if we didn't love them. We'd live in them. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason, y'all. Yeah, Skims bras are now available at skims, S-K-I-M-S dot com. Plus, you can get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu. Yes, please support the podcast by letting them know that you love our podcast and you love Skims. And if you're looking for a gift for your Valentine or for yourself, Skims just launched their best Valentine shop ever, also available at skims.com. Thank you, Skims, for sponsoring What Women Binge. I was always like the world teenager. freaked out the first time Melissa played a grandmother. The internet I played went a grandmother wild. last year. Yeah, I played a grandma. It was fun. <laughs> Look at Annie's well. face. Wow, I'm just trying to do the math on that. 47, you know, if mean, I had my hey, kid at 20 and she had, yeah, I mean, like, the kid's supposed to be about 12. It could happen. Yeah, those are, yeah, that's oh. a generational change up, I guess. Wow, okay. Yeah, it was a true crime movie. My grandma, my granddaughter mm -hmm. kills, well, it's a three-parter. Oh, my daughter and my, and my granddaughter, it's one of us kills the son-in-law and which one of us did it is sort of the idea behind the movie but but like wow. it went viral that like I was playing a grandma but I'm like I'm 47 mm. like I could totally play a grandma so you know yeah you you could I mean Betty White was playing like Golden Girls from the time she was like 42 or something right so not really maybe, is that true maybe they not were that way young, younger young. They, yeah yeah the sex in the city girls now are the same age as the Golden Girls were like no <laughs> They're like in their, wow. when they were in their fifties. Like, yeah, they were, isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. It's just how we used yeah, to look. That is back then. crazy. Like, I think you look younger yeah. with like, I mean, and, and of course things change, but like in designing women, like the way you'd wear your hair or something, it might even make you look, sometimes look older than you do now playing a Mima on Sheldon. You That's know, so. Right. right. It's, it's style. Yeah, it's interesting. E yeah. Styling is everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And something about that 80s style made everyone look older. It was just, yeah, the Doris I, find, was always I couldn't, I couldn't do, I couldn't do my roots anymore. It's just, it was like, it's like a full-time job yeah. because, <laughs> so I just went and uh, so I'm just, this is my hair now. I love it. I, I love if it. Wants, if they, I think actually I look younger with my, my real hair at yeah. this point. Yeah. It's beautiful. It suits you. It's so fun. It, and it really does. Yeah. A little wild, a little spunky. You've always been super uh, stylish. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, tell I us. Like it and I, I don't even, I don't even have to comb it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Wait, so you're like, you're like the, the godmother of all things, what women binge. So tell us what we need to be binging besides, okay. Masters of air. Have you seen the new look yet? Uh-uh. Oh, that's Ooh. on Apple, too. It's uh, Chanel Dior kind of vibing oh, it out during oh, World War II. Yes, I heard. Everybody, I'm writing you, this you've got your notepad. I've got my phone. I'm like, what are we watching? The, look? <laughs> okay. the new look. The new look. The new look. But it's kind of like Masters of Air. Um, it's got that look to it. It feels like every episode's like a movie, but yeah. it's great characters. It's based in this time that really, you know, it's kind of real stuff happening and world war two and you know, just fantastic. Right. Right. I want that's, that is, that's been on my list, but I couldn't remember the name of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can't yeah. remember. Anything. It's a strange but name. lines. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you seen, have you seen Mr. And Mrs. Smith? No, but I heard it's amazing. Like, Oh, wait. 
Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. The movie? Um, is there a new show? No, there's a new series out with Danny Glover and who's the woman? All but, right. Um, everybody on the uh, side. Her, her name, uh, Maya Erskine. Maya Erskine. Yeah. And she is sensational. She had another show called Pen 15. Oh, yeah. Which translated, and if you're a teenager, she's also, she's like John Hughes. She got into the mind of teenagers. It, it Pen 15 is a he, 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 if you're in seventh grade, because it looks like a penis. On a calculator. So she, at like 35 or whatever, plays a 12-year-old in seventh grade with her best friend from college who looks a lot older but is so awkward, she kind of pulls it off as a seventh <laughs> grader, too. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's genius. It's super fun, yeah. And... And in um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, she and Donald Glover, they're both writers, which is interesting. And it, um, and he writes and directs some of them. Okay. okay. But they have uh, such chemistry. It's vi- it, it's thrilling. Oh, Just thrilling. Yeah. Well, it's thrilling to the me. List. That's awesome. Um. Well, we have some questions we ask all of our guests. Can we can we ask you some of these questions? Absolutely. All right. Is there a movie that you feel like you should have watched but you still haven't? Oh god, that list is so long. <laughs> Just give us the number. Like, like You know, I have been <laughs> I have been working so much for 50 years. I just and between three children and that it's like I miss most movies. Mhm. Um, I like it now that you can, you know, for all the Oscars, they just, they, it's an app mm-hmm. because I'm in the Academy and I can, I can watch all of them. But the, even that, there's too many to watch of that. Yeah, there's a lot. But what did, I'm, I, I was thinking, you know, Lawrence of Arabia. I think I haven't seen oh. in a, I think I haven't seen it at the movie theaters, but. I've seen little bits of it, and I'm just wondering why Peter O'Toole has so much eyeliner on. <laughs> <laughs> that one, whenever I watch it, I'm like, I they're, can't, they're in the desert. Like they're I can't the follow the, get out of the desert because I'm like, what was that? <laughs> this white man out in the middle of the desert, and he, you know, he looks like a silent movie star. <laughs> yes. I, I'm just, I can't get past it. What's going on? Very distracting. <laughs> yeah, that is not one of my favorites. <laughs> it, anyway. I don't know. Um, I can't think of any others. <laughs> that's all right. That's a good one. I mean, that's a ask, great answer. Ask me something else. All right. Is there a TV villain or any villain that you love to hate? Mm. Like Nicholas Holt would be a well, good negative. example from The Great. He's sort of the villain that you just like can't get enough of. Uh, well, is he a villain or is he a victim? Well, second season he definitely becomes a victim, victim. I think. <laughs> by his own doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I don't know. Negativity really scares me. Mm. Like, just to even imagine that you could like a villain, it's like, um, I mean, could you could you really imagine thinking of Putin and thinking, you know, yeah. maybe he had a hard childhood. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> no. This is not a childhood. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, no. So I, I, I don't go into the darkness to okay. support it. All right. Um, I can't do it. No, right. I, I get that. Um, do you have a favorite book genre? A book genre. I love biographies oh. because people are interesting. I, I, I like that. What was the most um, recent one you read? I, I've been working. I don't. I can't read when I work. Oh, you know what I do? I, biographies are the one that I actually will do audiobooks when I drive. Like if you're ever like driving around. All yes. Time. Um, I know you're very yeah. like. I, you don't live far from work, which you're so lucky. But I've only got three minutes. It take me like five years to get through. <laughs> yes. um, uh, you know, sometimes. Well, have you done Viola Davis? Have you read Viola Davis's book yet? I have not. Is it? Oh, uh, well, so she's good. I mean, her life is like a movie. They need to make her life a movie soon. Like the childhood she had, so traumatic. I had I no idea. 
it's fantastic. And especially listening to her read it, listening to her tell the story. That's why I always like doing audio books yeah. for biographies because I love ooh, ooh, ooh. Rita Moreno's. Well, I'm about to I'm about to be unemployed, so I can I can listen to it. She time is sensational. Yeah. I I I I have complete uh I, I just honor her as mm-hmm. for the gift gifted person that she is and coming from that background. Um I did a I, I did a, um Vagina monologues with her in New York. You did, and, and this was, oh gosh, this was twenty years ago. Wait, did we do it together? We did. No, we, wait, no. You and I worked together on SVU, right? That's right. Yes, this that's how we originally got in touch. Been around. Oh, that's right. Shoot. Yeah. Well, anyway, I. I I worked with her then, and and amazing. she was just astonishing. And uh, I'm I'm so happy that she's uh, had you know someone. Yeah, it's yeah. You really got a career. She's having. She just gets better and better and better yeah. and better. She does the Woman King. I really thought the Woman King was going to be nominated last year. I was so mad that it wasn't. I thought it was so her performance. Everything was like so spectacular. Un- unbelievable. Yeah. And I forgot her name, but the 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 young woman who played her daughter. Oh yeah. She, she, oh, uh, the right. cast was insane, like insane. Yeah. Um. Well, it was you know it was very it was also just great for women. I mean, you know, it's very empowering. Yes. Yeah. For women of every color. Yeah. Uh, because those uh, those 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 fighters, they were. Bad ass guns too. I mean, and the fact that it was a true, like based on a, what they think is a true story, is insane. It was, a, yeah. If people didn't see that movie, like that, I think everyone needs to go watch that movie if you haven't, because that's yeah. a. It's important. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good one. It wasn't All right, what recognized. Your, like, did you win any awards? I don't think so. That's really surprising. I don't think so. Um, what is your go-to karaoke song, Annie? <laughs> Oh gosh, I I don't really do karaoke. You haven't done a rap party that's like karaoke or something. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. We did it at Christmas this year, though, um, and... <laughs> which was really um, well. We, we were doing Christmas songs, oh. you know. So, we, um, uh, you, if you want to cry, you do. I'll be home for Christmas, and uh, if you want to laugh, it's I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> We have these little grandchildren, so we want to do this and keep it PG. Um, yeah, yeah. I can't. Um, I don't really drink much, so it's. Uh, I think you re- uh, you have to have at least two glasses of wine before you get up and do anything, <laughs> any anywhere. Would you ever like do like that. the Mass Singer? I don't know what that is. A Fox oh. show where you put on a mask and sing and they don't know and they have to guess who the celebrity is. I did it last year. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever done. I don't sing. I barely it's like my to do favorite. I love it. Oh, <laughs> it was, it was, I had to make my husband go with me and like we hid out in LA because I was so afraid. I didn't want to talk to anyone or see anyone. And I was so afraid and I went and did it and I couldn't tell anyone for like two months. And then it came out. It was so terrifying, but you should, it's so, it's, it's honestly like, Oh God, that, I no, I think I think it would be an out of body experience. Yes. I think it might kill me. But that's what's funny. It's though. the you know. <laughs> they, I think the number one fear in life, you would think spiders or something, but no, it's public speaking. For people really? to stand up and open their mouths and try to be coherent in front of a group of people is the number one fear. People can, you know, it, it starts young when you're like in first grade, and they go, "Would you stand up and?" You know, whatever. But uh, number two is singing in front of people. I think it I mean, because for it's me, just for sure. Yeah, that's what I you're right. When I, I don't drink a lot either, but two drinks is what it, I, Amanda calls me. Two gin, Melissa. Like, <laughs> it's a two drink minimum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She calls me literally. My nickname is Two Gin Melissa by Amanda because I'm most fun when I've had two gins. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. No, she's fun all the time, but you get two gins in her and she's likely to tap dance or. Yeah, you, know. you never know what you're going to get. Three is too much. One is well, okay, but two is the best. Oh, that's the sweet spot. <laughs> all right. What is a, is there like a reboot of something you liked better than the original? Mm, um, that's a tough one. Well, gosh, I think Star is Born oh, was pretty good with that is with Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I mean, Judy Garland's <laughs> pretty good, but I don't know. Uh, that that's the one that comes to mind. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's a great one. one. All right, what was your first concert? Um, I. Gosh, I don't, I, I, I really don't remember. You know, I grew up in rural Kentucky and I, um, there weren't a lot of concerts around. I mean, I lived right, uh, you know, 50 miles north of Nashville and 70 years ago, there weren't a lot of bands coming through. There was some country music, of course, in, in Nashville at the time, but Wow, I don't know. It must have been in college, and uh, uh, you know, for, I'm a theater person. So if I, if I had money for a ticket of some kind, I would go to theater, not not music. What was your first show? I mean, my first show, um, the first show I ever saw on Broadway was called "Baby Want a Kiss." And I think I was 11 or 12, and it starred Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow, cool. And, uh, and uh, then I, in the same trip, I saw Blythe Spirit with uh, B, the famous, delightful uh, actress named B. Lily and Tammy Grimes. And I was like, oh, I think I want to do this. Uh, oh, so that's like, that's what launched your career, like got you started in the industry? Yes. I mean, and what a, what a crazy uh, dream that was to have been, I mean, it's it's like an old movie, you know, she, she was just a girl on a farm in Kentucky and, <laughs> and here she is. Here she is. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, well, Amanda's going to ask you, we have these this or that questions. She's going to ask you some this or that's, but. Um, okay. They're just silly little. Yeah. Passings. Okay. okay, go for it. Rosé or Frosé? Um, um, Rosé, if it's just a, a regular afternoon, Frosé if I'm on the beach. Ah, Fair yes. yes. That pink one. <laughs> drive or be driven be driven well sometimes sometimes i just sometimes driving is the only time i'm ever alone same yes yep. so sometimes it's like yeah i'll just drive myself okay i want everybody to just <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. um anyway uh brunch or happy hour neither Oh, it uh, brunch. Yeah, I don't like breakfast foods and um, and happy hour. It's just it's too early to drink. The evening is ruined. I agree so I don't like. Don't invite no, actually, me to either. One I think of those. I think you came and met me and some of the crew from Sheldon once for a drink, but you came late. <laughs> you came yeah, a little later. I, yeah, it's not. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Five o'clock? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go to sleep right after nope. that. Um, Spotify or Apple Music, or how do you prefer to get your music? I just tell Alexa what to play. Uh, yeah. And if she, she's very moody, sometimes she will not give it to you. But generally speaking, I just ask Alexa, and I don't know where she gets her music. I don't know how... It, any technology works. Me neither. Um, Wait, I think we missed it's read the book. Phone, it's great. <laughs> Annie, read the book or watch mm. the movie? Uh, watch the movie. Watch the movie. Um, and you- I'm old. I want the cliff notes. <laughs> I want visuals. <laughs> um, do you have Do you have your phone with you? Because we wanted to ask you one. Oh, is that what you're using? We just want to know how many unread emails. No, I- We're going to judge you right now and decide and 
if and want to see how many unread emails you might have. Are you are you guessing? Um, well, I'm at I'm at 22. Amanda's somewhere in the 30,000s. I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm feeling uh, Annie's more the people, Amanda. I I am well above 39,000 currently. 39,000. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Thank you. I feel so much better about myself <laughs> because I I only have 127. Oh, she's <laughs> team Melissa. That's my, you're my team. But I'm pretty sure those were all from yesterday. <laughs> so you clear it out every day. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just don't give people your email address. <laughs> you know, but they won't let you in any app. I don't care. If, yeah. I mean, if you want to buy a pair, uh, some sheets, yes. you know, now everybody in North America has my friggin' email and they're going to let me know. Yeah. I know. It, yeah, that's you got to watch out for that stuff. But oh my gosh, this has been so fun, Annie. I can't thank you enough for like coming on and talking to us and hanging out with us when you're so busy promoting a movie and finishing your show. And um, how many more? So there's, what, uh, do you know what the finale, the finale, finale episode of Sheldon is? So we can tell people to watch out for it. When, when it is? Yeah, it's like May. Is it? You no, know, I. You know, I I don't know. Uh, we let let's. We, what are you wrapping? We just air. Uh, we wrap April sixteenth. And you're but you're on what? Are you on Wednesdays have, or Thursdays? Thursdays, Thursdays at eight. At eight on CBS. I, and then it reairs on like. And it's also Paramount Plus. Is it Paramount mm -hmm. Plus? And uh, well, you know, all you have to do is put it. In yeah. the bubble, <laughs> and it will. And, and I still do the old school, it. like you can find it Thursdays at eight, and uh, you know. <laughs> well, we've we found too now that uh, we we're streaming on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I, I mean, I the viewership because people love to binge. That's right, and uh, I, uh, you know, I've been just shuffling through my life just sort of incognito and all of a sudden since we went on Netflix I I I can't go to the grocery store without seven people going hey let, oh oh hey yeah. um and they all report that they've been binging it on Netflix yeah oh cool so, all right yeah, we're the number one we're the number one uh, show on Netflix ah. now we're the number one show on um uh, on uh, CBS, Paramount, uh, and Paramount. Plus. So, so, so of course they canceled us. <laughs> <laughs> but you get, but look, Ghostbusters coming out this week. Like it's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited. It is gonna be, and awesome. I really hope we get the chance I'm to work excited. together again someday. And I just adore. It's you. happened several times before, so it'll happen again. Yes, it will. We'll have to work together. I've actually been writing a script, so um, okay. I'll send it to you. Maybe we get to work together again. But I adore you. Thank you so much. We're going to make sure everybody watches Young Sheldon, goes to see Ghostbusters. It's a huge blockbuster. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you. Love you back. Thank you. Womanette. What? Womanette.